Hi, and welcome to Section 3, Optimizing GeoServer. In this section, you will learn how to improve GeoServer reliability and speed by identifying instances when potential client demand outstrips hardware resources. First, you'll learn about bottlenecks and how they can be resolved. You'll learn how to optimize vector and raster data stores. And finally, we'll cover the basics of clustered GeoServer deployment. Let's get started with resolving bottlenecks. In this video, you'll learn why bottlenecks occur and how to go about resolving them. We'll start by exploring examples of bottlenecks. You'll learn to solve bottlenecks with tuning. And finally, you'll learn methods of testing and benchmarking to use in tandem with tuning to iteratively detect bottlenecks. Bottlenecks occur when resources don't match demand. On the hardware level, this can involve network when the internal network, for instance, if you have multiple servers, is exceeded by the demand on the internal network between the servers, or if the network path from your servers to the client is exceeded. In the case of storage, we have limits on the space that is available on disk, and this can be exceeded easily by large geospatial files that you may sometimes be dealing with, as well as the speed of the disk itself. Memory capacity, again, GeoServer is highly demanding application for memory as well as processor capacity. On the software level, there are bugs, of course, and you'll want to be mindful of these. You can detect these, as we'll see further on in this video, when we sometimes see our server meeting its limits. These can sometimes be coming from bugs, but more often than not, we're getting these from hardware limitations or from these other software limitations, which include on the Java level, we have the JVM, as well as the servlet container or application server that you may be using. The GeoServer settings, which particularly we'll want to focus on rendering and data connections and format, since these are all areas which can be highly demanding on your hardware resources. And at the browser level, rendering can be a big demand if you're doing that on the browser instead of on the server. And the way that your UI is interacting with your resources can also cause bottlenecks. And the reason to be aware of these different areas that may cause bottlenecks is we can hone in on these with benchmarking, logs, and so on, and detect where the bottleneck is occurring. In the following two global tuning examples, you'll learn how to resolve bottlenecks that occur throughout the GeoServer instance through tuning. The JVM settings are a good example of the dilemma we deal with in tuning, where resource allocation is too high, it will cause an out-of-memory error, and GeoServer will crash. If we set some of our parameters too low, while this may result in greater stability on the server, it can cause requests to drop or slow down. The easiest way to alter the JVM settings that you saw a moment ago is to alter the Java Ops environment variable. Here you can see an echo of the Java Ops environment variable. These may be some settings that we already set here. By default, you probably will not see anything when you echo the environment variable, but here are some parameters. One is related to the minimum amount of memory that GeoServer or the JVM grabs when you start up a GeoServer or the JVM, and we can bump this up to add this memory so GeoServer isn't trying to allocate this as it runs into more demand for resources. And we can set a max amount of memory that the JVM can grab, and this can prevent an out-of-memory error by limiting the amount of memory that the JVM will grab so we don't have a crash. This soft ref policy parameter is related to the amount of memory that we're giving for this sort of soft reference, which is related to cache. So if we bump this up, we'll have more information being stored in the cache, which of course enhances performance. But on the downside, we can run into that out of memory error again if it's taking too much memory within the cache. The command in Windows for setting environment variables is setx. So this is an example of adding a new parameter to the Java Ops environment variable. And this particular parameter involves garbage collection. There are a number of garbage collection options that you can use with the JVM. And this one in particular involves multiple threads for doing garbage collection concurrent with other requests that may be going on with your GeoServer instance. And the benefit here is that GeoServer won't need to pause to do this garbage collection, and garbage collection, of course, frees up memory. 
The control flow extension limits the number of concurrent operations like requests and threads. Control flow offers the same kind of tuning challenge where too high a resource allocation like concurrent requests at too great a memory will give us an out of memory crash and too little will result in greater latency. The control flow extension requires, in addition to the usual extension installation process, a manually created control flow dot properties file under the data underscore dir directory. The content for this can be found on the control flow reference page on the GeoServer site, the URL which you can see here, or you can use this sample that we've provided with the video. And you can see this gets into uh, client timeouts, number of get met requests that can be made in parallel or concurrent, things like the maximum concurrent number of Excel outputs that can be requested, and you can hone in on things, operations, which may require an unusual amount of resources from your server, and this will allow a fairer use of resources across your entire user base. To test that bottlenecks have been resolved or to detect the possible presence of bottlenecks, it is important to use performance monitoring and logging tools. The comparison of performance indicators at different points in time is called benchmarking. It is important to benchmark before and after changes to hardware or software configuration to confirm that the bottleneck has been resolved. You'll use some tools we've worked on before, like GeoServer logs, which you can see here. You'll recognize this. You will note that oftentimes when a resource is requested, you'll be able to actually see how long it takes for GeoServer to return the request. Browser developer tools, especially the network tab, allows you to see how long it takes to process a request. And system performance logs. And something that's really useful here is a performance monitoring program to produce logs and to visually see the performance of different resources on your server. One particular program that you would want to check out if you're on Windows is Performance Monitor, and this produces a very useful graphical output that you can use to see where bottlenecks may be occurring. For example, if you're seeing a gradually increasing output or throughput on your network device and at some point it hits a maximum and then just drops off sharply, you'll know that a bottleneck has occurred and it's similar type of visual representation that you'll see for other hardware resources. JMeter is a great option for doing GeoServer benchmarking. And with JMeter, unlike a simple system logs, for example, we can actually simulate multiple requests on the server, and you can always use JMeter in, in tandem with these other logging options that we have. To produce this sort of test on JMeter, you just create a thread group, which includes the option to use multiple threads, and then a loop, which then will run a request or some sort of operation in a loop, and that way you can test what it would be like to get these multiple concurrent operations on your server. And it's best to do this with a remote JMeter instance so the resources that it takes to run JMeter are not interfering with what you're seeing for your server performance. And this is even more useful when you can work with clusters. And JMeter is a very sophisticated program. You can also include random requests and things like that within this program.